This is the Neomo X by Hooky. It's a robot mower that doesn't use RTK. Instead, it uses LiDAR SLAM and vision navigation, as well as direct satellite connectivity to achieve three zone mowing plus no-go areas. Let's see how easy it is to set up. Let's see how it works on quite a large lawn. It should do up to one and a half acres. <laughs> so here's what you get in the kit. You get a base station for charging, a power adapter, little accessories pack. They even give you a brush for cleaning it. How cute. The mower itself, a quick start guide, and a boatload of packaging, about half of which is recyclable and half of which I don't even know how I'm gonna get rid of. The mower comes fully assembled and it's got a 250 millimeter diameter cutting disc with the usual tiny little blades. You do get some spare ones in the accessory kit, so that's good. Although I will point out, I've had a few of these robot mowers going for a few months now and I still haven't had to change a set of blades. They're surprisingly good because they don't travel fast. You don't need a really long blade to get a good, decent cut. The other good thing about this mower is that it comes fully assembled. Little bumper bars and everything are all ready to go. All I've got to do is plug this into that, charge it up, and no doubt I'll probably have to go through some sort of malarkey with some sort of app. Okay, so I have downloaded the app. I've updated the firmware in the mower, which took about four or five minutes. And I've now followed the instructions on the map and it's told me to add a map element. And I press add a map element and it says failed to leave charging station, lawnmower malfunction. Okay, so the app was connecting to the Wi-Fi, but it wasn't requesting the password for the home Wi-Fi. I thought that was a bit strange. Third time round, we've got it connected. Now let's see if we can get it to start mapping. I've hit connect and I want to add a map and now hopefully I'll be able to drive it off the charging station and drive it around the yard like a little radio controlled car and make a mowing map. I won't run over the petunias. I'll be in all sorts of trouble if I do that. <laughs> this is fun. Now, while I'm not going to clean up every stick and bit of bark for the purposes of this review, I want to see what this thing can do. I'm going to get rid of big branches. And a few more unholy things that it should probably never see in its lifetime. Okay, so I've just taken the little mower back to the base station and the app has frozen and it's saying place the lawnmower on the charging station and start mapping. One thing I have just noticed and it's not in the quick start guide or the app instructions is that there's a little rubber cover over the LiDAR sensor. So I'm going to take that off. Maybe that was the problem. Right, let's start again. No, app's completely frozen. All right, so the hooky's been here for about a week now, and I ran out of time when it failed to set up properly the first time, and I've had to come back a week later. We'll take its little cap off, we'll start up the app, and we'll see how it goes. But before we do all that, there's a couple of things I want to talk about. And the first one is where you need to put this little hooky machine. You'll notice that I've got it set off from the pathway and the house by about half a meter. This has to be away from walls or the cameras on board won't let it back up into the charging station. So it's okay to have your charging station on this side of the pathway or even encroaching a bit onto the pathway, but it's not okay to have the charging station up against the wall of your house because the mower won't dock. Now this leads me to the second point, which is complexity. Some of the robot mowers that I've reviewed on this channel use RTK stations powered by solar panels or 240 volt. You've got to find the perfect location for them. They use an app to control the machine and schedule it. It can take literally half to a full day to set these machines up properly. The little hooky tries to do away with some of that complexity, but in order to be able to do things like cross pathways or dock at its charging station from another mowing location, you need to have an app to control where it sees itself in the environment. There are cheaper, again, robot mowers that are even more simple that don't need an app at all. You press one button, they start mowing. 
But things like pathways stop them in their tracks and you can't get them to cross over what they perceive as being barriers. So what the team at Hookie are trying to do with this little robot mower is they're trying to take away all the complexity and the difficulty of setup from the RTK stations and the unreliability of yet more technology. But they're trying to maintain enough technology to allow this to have a bit of common sense, to go where you put it, to mow in three different locations and to return to a charging station that's not on the lawn that you're mowing. Start. Ah, there we go. She's off and running. Okay, so the good news, it's remembered the map from last time. I pressed start. I allocated the area to mow. I had to press start again and she's off and running. Now I've selected deliberately an area that's got plenty of little obstacles. We don't want to run these over and that's got plenty of traps that have foiled every robot mower so far. Every single robot mower has had to be rescued from over there. Let's see how the hooky Neomo goes. Because you control the little Neomo through an app, you've got a lot of customization available to you. You right? You can set the cutting height, you can set the obstacle avoidance, you can set the area you want mowed and you can schedule it up to a couple of times a week using the app. The app, now that I've bound it to the mower and the house, is working flawlessly and I haven't seen a glitch in it yet. The obstacle avoidance on the mower is working quite well. You can see it's registering me as an obstacle at the moment. But because I've set it to only avoid obstacles of greater than 20 centimetres in height, it's munching up the bark quite nicely. It's going to take it a while to do this lawn because, after all, this is not really a lawn, this is more a jungle. But it's a good test on this little thing. And so far, it's got further than a good number of other robot mowers that I've tried in the past. Okay, we have our first problem. Now, you can tell we have a problem in a couple of different ways. The first is, I was inside editing the first bit of this video and I got a notification on my app to say that the cutting disc was potentially jammed. The second way you can tell is the little brand name Hookie goes from blue to red. And the third way, and this is a tricky one, it stops. So if your mower stopped, there's probably a problem. So it's telling me to lift this up, check the blades, and there was a stick caught in the lifting mechanism of the blades. Fair enough. Okay, so in clearing the cutter bar, I've also triggered the alarm on the front collision avoidance bar. I've also triggered the overturn. I've triggered all sorts of error codes, but the theory is this is easy to clear. All you have to do is press OK, and then the Mo and the OK button at the same time. Now this is the garden that has stopped every single other robot mower that I have tested and reviewed. And we've just hit an obstacle, so it might stop this one as well. There might be a few error codes. Let's see how far we can push things. Because it hit a steel post that was buried in the ground and I'd forgotten was even there. It turned the mower off. When it hit a solid object like this, the mower just shut down. Once I removed the steel stake, all I had to do was turn the mower on, go into the app, resume the task, and off she goes again. She's not even sulking. Well, it's about 20 minutes later and the little hookie has made its way out of the garden beds back onto the lawn, which is its natural habitat. And it's making quite nice straight lines of the cutting job. And the lawn looks great with so much adjustability. You can get your grass as high or as low as you want. And with the obstacle avoidance adjustability as well, I'm pretty sure if I spent the next couple of weeks getting to know this little mower, and getting my settings exactly right, it would barely break down. It has had trouble with large sticks that have jammed its cutter bar, and when it hit the steel stake, it shut down, but it's been really easy to rectify, 
and it's been incredibly good at going straight back to doing what it was doing straight where it was. The app and the mapping system have been flawless. So if you're thinking about a robot mower and don't want to go to the expense and complexity of RTK modules mounted on your roof, but you want a mower that you can set for separate zones, that does recognise pathways and that has no-go zones and scheduling options, then the little hooky could well be, I reckon, the best mower for you. And I tell you what, I've tried a few.